Tom Cruise 10 Best Movies Ranked Tom Cruise is, without a doubt, one of the best living actors. While the term movie star is becoming increasingly obsolete in today's Hollywood, Cruise remains a fantastic entertainer, a larger-than-life performer, truly an icon of the silver screen. Let's discuss his top 10 best movies. Hey guys, welcome to your entertainment channel, Netflix Top, where we tell you all about the top-rated movies and series on Netflix. So grab your popcorn and stay with us until the end of this video, because today's video is going to list down the top 10 Tom Cruise movies to watch on Netflix. So let's get started. Number 10. The fever dream that is this masterpiece is unquestionably one of Cruise's most intriguing flicks. The actor spent 400 days filming Stanley Kubrick's final picture, and while the finished product received mixed reviews, it's tough to dispute that Eyes Wide Shut was one of Cruise's most daring character choices as a performer. The film offers a riveting depiction of infatuation and jealousy, with plenty of psychological interest, but Dr. Bill's rampant insecurity makes it all seem a little hollow in the end. The customer's sexual journey is fascinating, but it's difficult to sympathize with the husband who is outraged because his wife told him she had a dream about cheating on him with another man, i.e. she's human. So while it's a little foolish to see Dr. Bill slide into envy over something that never happened, Kubrick makes it apparent early on in the film that this was a marriage with lots of flaws, and the examination of Bill and Alice's relationship remains an intriguing component of the plot. Number 9. Tom Cruise and writer-director Christopher McGuire introduced Elegance to the franchise with this film, which was a welcome change of pace. They topped the franchise with Mission Impossible Fallout, making the best Mission Impossible film to date. On every level, this is superb filmmaking, with action that builds throughout the film but never gets silly or rude. While McGuire ramps up the action, he also smartly builds the most internal film in the Mission Impossible franchise to date, putting fans for the first time inside Ethan Hunt's thoughts. We get a feeling of who this individual is, rather than what other characters think of him, which enhances the emotional as well as physical stakes. Number 8. This is, without a doubt, Tom Cruise's most human film. Jerry Maguire is a strange duck in that it doesn't allow the conventional romantic comedy structure conceptually, yet it is a romantic comedy all the same. Jerry Maguire was released at a period when Cruz was primarily working with auteurs, and the pairing of Cruz and writer-director Cameron Crowe proved to be extremely productive, since the picture is as much about the Tom Cruise image as it is about a sports agent at the end of his rope. Jerry Maguire is almost cathartic as Cruz bears his soul, and he gives one of the best performances of his career without any flashy explosions or high concepts. This is Tom Cruise at his most intimate, and it turns out that the guy's a big softie. Number 7. Tom Cruise's most blatantly political, by extension, controversial picture to date is Oliver Stone's 1989 Vietnam War drama. It followed Cruz's forays into drama with The Color of Money and Rain Man, but in Born on the Fourth of July, he totally submerged himself in the role of Ron Kovic, with fantastic consequences. As he follows Kovic's life from an excited young man ready to go to war to a handicapped and dissatisfied veteran, this is one of Cruz's strongest performances and one of Stone's most striking pictures. It's not an easy arc to cover in a feature film's short time frame, but Cruz accomplishes it admirably with a lot of very touching scenes. Number 6. Tom Cruise is without a doubt Hollywood's best on-screen runner. So he was an obvious choice for Steven Spielberg's On the Run sci-fi neo-noir minority report. The movie was Spielberg and Cruise's first collaboration, and it was a huge success. Spielberg's handling of the noir components of the tale is superb, and his enjoyment of the film's more B-movie elements, remember the eyeball sequence, adds amusing color to one of the director's darkest films. Cruz's performance here is fantastic, as he takes on a more tragic figure than in some of his earlier works, and the film was released at a moment in Cruz's career when he was delving deeper into more nuanced roles. Minority Report was a wonderful marriage of his leading man blockbuster persona with a highly flawed, deeply damaged character, and the late 1990s, early 2000s may be the most interesting period in Cruz's cinema. Minority Report is a fascinating and thrilling entry in both Cruz and Spielberg's Auvers, and he pulls it off magnificently. Number 5. While Cruz's career has allowed him to play a wide range of characters, he has only played an outright villain once in Michael Mann's terrific pulsing thriller Collateral. Cruz plays Vincent with a lethal magnetism, assuming a cold, hardened, and striking physical aspect. 
Despite the character's complete disregard for human life, Vincent remains a guy who kind of wants to see pull off his trio of hits in one night, which is a testament to Cruz's talent. And that's where man's characterization skills shine, as there's a conflict between wanting Jamie Foxx's Max to survive this ordeal and wanting to know what Vincent will do next. This is one of Cruz's best performances, and it's one of his most watchable. Furthermore, while Mann previously delivered the quintessential Los Angeles crime city story with Heat and Collateral, the filmmaker captures an entirely different side of LA that feels both familiar and alien. Number 4. This film is a rarefied find, as it is possibly the most pleasant surprise of the decade thus far. Edge of Tomorrow is an unendingly smart, exciting, and most importantly, unique sci-fi actioner. But the picture isn't simply unique in terms of plot or direction. Cruz plays a role unlike any other he's ever played, an outright coward. He's a fantastic variation on viewer expectations for a Tom Cruise blockbuster, and it allows him to play a lovely character arc from coward to hero. Emily Blunt, on the other hand, is the film's secret weapon, imbuing the female lead role with all the complexity and energy of the protagonist while avoiding typical and predictable gender norms. Number 3. This film is unique in that its many, many memorable lines have remained in the zeitgeist not simply because they're catchy or silly, but because they land with such an impact that they're pretty much ingrained in culture's collective brain in perpetuity. Aaron Sorkin's screenplay, A Few Good Men, is an all-timer, and Rob Reiner directs this tremendous ensemble with care, letting the script and performances carry the film to its rousing confrontation in the closing moments. The premise of A Few Good Men is so simple, it's a story about good people doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because it's profitable or beneficial, that it has no reason to be this good. But Sorkin's script nails the human condition with compassion and confidence. A Few Good Men is, at its core, merely a good story done well, but it rises above good thanks to Sorkin's pitch-perfect script and excellent performances with Cruz, combining his iconic charm with Sorkin's rat-a-tat language. Number 2. This is the film that officially launched Tom Cruise into movie stardom, and for good reason. The actor's turn in Risky Business is the very definition of a star-making performance, at once charming, relatable, and unforgettable. But it helps that writer-director Paul Brickman's satire is so confidently realized. While Risky Business hit the zeitgeist for Cruise's good looks and the classic underwear moment, the film itself is really a brilliant and thoughtful treatise on adolescent sexuality, guilt, and capitalism. Number 1. You can say it's cheesy, you can say it's overly homoerotic, but boy is Top Gun a hell of a film that is the quintessential Tom Cruise movie. Tony Scott's chronicle of elite fighter pilots was a massive hit when it opened in 1986, solidifying its place in the American cultural zeitgeist for generations to come, and it remains an incredibly good time. Top Gun is all about male camaraderie, and in that sense may be the best romance movie ever made. The love between these actors, even to as contentious as Maverick and Iceman, is genuine, and the film celebrates masculinity while simultaneously embracing the more sensitive aspects of male relationships. And this brings us to the end of the video. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share with us in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for amazing movie reviews coming your way. And thank you for watching.